hit it. What about my sweat equity? Sweat equity. I'm just gonna pitch about this thing the whole time. The mic? You gotta tell the audio listeners what's going on. We're not just on video. No. I don't wanna. Yes and what? Those, those Groundlings classes are really paying off. I know. Wait, which improv place did you go to? It's uh, Jeff Goldblum's place. Yes, yes and. <laughs> Do we need to stop so you can uh, change your diaper? That... Is, did you come up with that? This morning. Did you really? I swear to God. That's <laughs> you pretty, fucking teed me up perfect. That's pretty fucking good. I, I didn't even mean to. I, I would never do that. I would <laughs> never tee you up. We just got really good chemistry, buddy. Uh, Mel, Melissa Golden. That's me. Yeah. Can I call you Mel? Mel G? Sure. Um, Mel G for short, always. Stimcelix.org. And uh, we want to have you on. Eric is more of the wellness uh, kind of part of our team here on Sweat Equity. I don't know anything about stem cells except that i think it works from what i under from what i've heard i've only heard like rogan's interview with mel gibson mm-hmm. Dude, about his dad yeah no, those, what, they're magic it's the closest thing to a magician we got so a what, real magician what's the deal with it because the whole interview uh i heard and then there was another guy in rogan right before that that was talking about being the guy in panama doing the actual stem cell mm-hmm. uh stuff how does this work? Because I know there's weird um, things with the United States and stem cells. And uh, how, do, how can we do it here? So everyone has this huge idea in their head of like 90s, Bush, Dolly the sheep, and abortion. And they all kind of go together. And uh-huh. th- those are called embryonic stem cells. They were made illegal in the 90s. So a lot of people still think that stem cells are illegal and they're not. So we're not using embryonic stem cells. We're using adult stem cells. Like second generation Mexicans if you're really racist. <laughs> but no, you Pretty don't much. look at me. You know? Thank you. <laughs> that was just as good as... Yes, that's, <laughs> <laughs> it's actually pretty on point. I was trying to think of a metaphor to throw out there. But there's probably a lot of racist people that think a lot of Mexicans shouldn't be there just by looking mm-hmm. at them. But that's a 90s thing. All right. Yep. Um, <laughs> all right. So... Uh, uh, continue, please. Sorry. Yeah. I, had, I had to interject. So we're using adult stem cells. Everyone has them. They're stored in your own body. We take them out of an area of storage, and we introduce them into an area that's um, you know, degenerated or inflamed. inflamed. Okay. Um, but we can do almost all the same stuff that Panama can do um, in regards to stem cells. We can't you know, manipulate the sample the way they can, okay. but it's totally legal, and everyone has access to it, and no one knows about it. They actually think you have to go to Panama or Mexico to get stem cells you don't what isn't it different now that before they thought embryonic stem cells were like the only ones that were going to work and now it's kind of been discovered that the uh, were they somatic is that right no okay never mind the other ones swing and a miss. are also uh, like capable of what the embryonic ones were is that right yeah so I there's there's right. some there's some terms uh, there's pluripotent that's probably a word you've heard before. Embryonic cells are pluripotent, which mm. means they can turn into sure. any type of cell in the body. So think about an embryo. An embryo is the small baby, like bef- in, in gestation before it turns into a baby. No, you, you can talk okay? down to us all you want. <laughs> Seriously, so, like don't like don't five. hiccup. We ask, we we ask our business attorney to talk to us like we're five. So uh, there's no difference here. I'm gonna. I'm gonna get well, I know that you guys love high school biology, which is why you're talking to me about biology. I find, so. <laughs> I, honestly, we find ourselves doing, looking up the things we should have learned in high school a lot of the time, history and science. <laughs> well, no, I, yeah, I'm just now mature enough to go to college. <laughs> right. Like, right. Just I, to go and show up and like study and shit. Yeah. <laughs> Before, no, you were not qualified for that. I wasn't even qualified for that. Yeah. Who are these children going to college? Exactly. <laughs> Why is he wearing Birkenstocks? Two thousand two. Those were a thing. Uh, me, me, and Big all time. the lesbians. <laughs> oh, you were one of those ladies. Yeah, I drove a Subaru. Um, so <laughs> wore a hockey jersey to class. You know, all the, all the trappings. So my thing is, uh, like, all right. So explain it. You can explain it to the. I'm the dumbest common denominator. You can keep it explaining it that way. So baby. Okay, Things that make so, baby. All right. So there was what, there's how an embryo. Name? There's stop it. There's an embryo, right? Embryonic stem cells come from that embryo, which is uh, a baby in gestation in a belly. Okay. okay? Um, those are pluripotent, which means they can turn into any type of human cell. 
right? Which makes them super crazy cool for regeneration. Okay. Uh, but as adults, we have multipotent stem cells. There's another vocab word, uh -huh. which means it can turn into lots of different cells, but they can't turn into every type of cell. So what we're using are multipotent adult stem cells. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. It's like a skeleton key of, of cells. Like, right? Yeah. yeah. Sure. Well, I mean, like pluripotent only works in, it's only one kind of, Thing. What's plurry mean? Plurry means a lot or many. Plur, the, uh, what is the thing that comes before the word? <laughs> well, <laughs> that plurry, section, that usually means potent. multiple. I know, but I'm saying, look, I don't know. You like how I corrected your grammar and couldn't think of the word I wanted to yeah, say? Yeah, nice. <laughs> Just want to point, point it out. <laughs> it's like a fat guy giving me jogging tips. It's, uh, <laughs> and then saying he's fat yeah, afterward. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I got, uh, yeah, I got hypertension. Mm -hmm. uh, um, the, uh, my thing was, I didn't know if it meant like, because uh, pluripotent, my brain got stuck at, that sounds like a weird potpourri. Uh, <laughs> like that's where my, that's why I have to like kind of sometimes ask the same question a couple of times. Wait, hold on. I got stuck because I have ADD on this bad joke. Um, I'll give you, I'll give you this simple rundown of what a stem cell is. Okay. Okay. So you're made up of cells. Do you remember that from high school biology? Uh -huh. I do. Okay. So we're all made up of cells. We have hair cells and lung cells and brain cells and kidney cells, right? We're all on the same page. Mm -hmm. Okay. When those cells divide, they can only make clones of each other. So when a kidney cell divides, mm -hmm. it makes more kidney cells. That's it. Same thing with heart cells and everything else. A stem cell is a very special cell that when it divides, it can turn into another stem cell or it can turn into one of those other types of cells, right? So kidney cell, cartilage cell, tendon cell, that makes them regenerative. And their jobs are to combat cell death, which basically means regenerate, and to reduce inflammation. Those are their two main jobs. Yeah. So that's why they're so, quote unquote, magical, because they're the only things regenerating tissue. Uh -huh. And you have them in your body all the time doing work right now you'd be dead within a few weeks without them right so what are you are you studying or uh, whatever uh, anything in, in particular in the body hair maybe for you grow <laughs> <laughs> so there's a lot of people doing asking for a friend yeah hair yeah, restoration yeah. with stem cells um it is a long process and depending on the severity of the problem sometimes a hair transplant is your better option um but stem cells have been shown <laughs> Depends, you know. A, a medical person needs to make that determination. I choose not to hear that. <laughs> He's he thinks you're a medical person that can make that decision right now. Um, but is there? Uh, Elon Musk did what? He had to have done that, right? He didn't do a hair transplant. Really? Have what? you seen? Pull up an old picture of Elon Musk. I don't want to mess with the internet. <laughs> yeah, we're having tech difficulties to get this show off the ground. But if you look at my, uh, <laughs> he's got a, a noticeable hair growth. It's like Travolta. Huh? Well, Steve Carell did it. Remember old office? Steve oh, Carell? yeah, I do remember but that. I don't know that he did stem cell. I'm pretty sure he just did a hair transplant and it looks very nice. Yeah, it seems like everybody, uh, unless it's been like the last couple of years, it had to have been a transplant. So, I mean, the, it wasn't hair really... transplantation uh, surgeries changed a lot. They don't cut that strip out of the back of your head anymore. They actually pluck individual follicles out and then like make a little incision and plant them up here. And you, you got to sit there while they do it. Yeah. Um, it actually, I've you seen can just some listen really to the podcast results. over and over again. Uh, I'd rather just have be bald. You, you don't <laughs> want to get a boner in front of the doctor? Way. Okay, got it. I get it. Oh, yeah. See the dick jokes. We can move. We did on a pre pre production kind of uh, interview uh, while we were waiting. I said the the dick jokes we don't really plan out; they just happen. They mm -hmm. just flow from our core. Yeah. Good. Speaking of which, anything what? in that area with stem cells? <laughs> yes, actually. Bam. Have you? Yeah. So Woo! I was I was hoping I'd get this Give opportunity me a Rick Flair. today. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like it when you tell me to do it. Give though. me a Ric Flair, please. <laughs> All right. Um, what's it called? Uh, so it's what? Called the what can I? What can we do? <laughs> so um, we have stem cell, and we also have PRP. These are both things that you can inject into the penis. Mm, and the penis whoa. is just a sponge. I'll hold on. Oh, I know. Me. It's an injection. <laughs> Listen, the penis is just a sponge. Uh, I right? thought we were talking stay about the Stay with me. Yeah. Stay, stay on the non-perversion, okay? Uh, don't trying. worry. I'm trying not to wince. Right? Yeah. And then... Um, blood vessels make little holes like a sponge, right? So the more blood the penis can hold, the bigger, stronger, longer, better erection ejaculation is, right? Like so a, it's just blood flow. Like a good water balloon, in a way. Like you can, like you, you can max it out, you know, <laughs> and then you got to tie a knot on it. Is it the same consequences? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. So we, yeah, we the, can... the more blood, does, is it thinner, presumably thinner skin, I guess? I don't know. <laughs> 
No. Uh, so no, no, no dummy. Fun, right? <laughs> so we use stem cells to regrow new blood vessels. They're angiogenic. That means they can uh-huh. create new blood vessels. Gotcha. And then we can, you know, uh, create more blood flow in his penis. That's I great. Boy, yeah. You effect. do need one of those. I believe I never that, thought of that. Yeah. The... <laughs> I've got a lot of questions, that I, but I don't want to divert this all into um, Dick Joke Alley. <laughs> so I'll we'll try to keep it above above board uh, for your sake. If anybody does it, is curious and maybe want to talk to you about this stuff, what do you, what's the most common things people ask you about this about stem cell? Um, or hair or, and dick, or just, probably. <laughs> no, actually, not. No, they ask if it can oh, just, regrow cartilage. Okay. Um, so Ooh. the majority of the stuff that we do is orthopedic, and uh-huh. we've all been told these silly things like, "Once your cartilage is gone, it's gone forever." Um, and you know, once your nerves are messed up, they're you know they're dead forever. Like our friend JB Ball, his basketball player. I mm-hmm. want him to have a show called Ballin' with JB Ball, a night show. <laughs> ah. Ballin'. And but he uh, he's he's been on the podcast. If you want to go back in the archives, but he's got two knees that are just like no cartilage, just. R- in my head, they just rub like this, like two knuckles against each other, mm-hmm. um, two fists knuckles oh, against, against each other mm-hmm. for the audio listeners, not for you. Um, <laughs> so you're directing it at me. Well, I'm, I'm, do, I'm making the gesture, and then I realized, oh, people, more bone people on bone. listen to this yes. than watch it probably. So um, I'm trying to say that you can help with that. Absolutely. If there's nothing there. Yeah, so there's actually no such thing as literal bone on bone. It's a term that we use to tell you how severe the problem is, right? Uh So when you look at a knee x-ray, because we all look at those all the time, um, normally there's a, you know, there's a little thin piece of black, right? And that's your cartilage, that's your meniscus. And um, on an x-ray, once it starts to wear down, it really does look like the bones are touching bone on bone. Uh So it's, it's just like a... A general term we use, but it's never actually bone on bone. You'd pass out from excruciating pain for weight bearing. It just doesn't happen. So Willis McGahee, who had the, probably the grossest knee injury of all time, or Deshaun Livingston was yeah. the Clippers guy. Oh yeah, remember when you see that? They have like no car. Like they still have cartilage in their knee, even though Willis McGahee's knee went yeah essentially backwards a bit- like a grasshopper. Ooh. Um, I remember where I was that night. Same here. It's weird. I was at Dan DePierre's house watching the game. Traumatized. Yeah, yeah. It was like my nine eleven. Um, <laughs> but it was. I wasn't gonna say it. <laughs> you said it. Yeah. Don't worry. <laughs> we'll say all the terrible things for you. <laughs> uh, we are like mentalists like that. Um, but I would say like that's interesting. Is there any other kind of fallacies like that? Because I don't even know that. That I thought that was a real thing. The bone on bone for knees or anything. It, elbow tennis elbow or whatever yeah so there's no such thing as bone on bone and stem cells can regrow new cartilage they're extremely chondrogenic um so there's a ton of research that you can read about that so it's actually one of my favorite things to tell people like hey you can't actually be bone on bone it's like a fun fact and you're good you're good at explaining this stuff like i it it reads through that you're passionate about it how'd you get into this that is a long story. Good. Um, we have time. This is a no, podcast. No, it's it's way too long to tell. Um, but really, it was just, uh, I was in a clinic. We were doing functional medicine. And someone said, how can we get these patients better faster? And we were like, we could do stem cells. And everyone was like, what? What? No way. No way. And started talking about Bush and Dolly the Sheep and all this What stuff. year is this? What are we talking? Uh, 2012, 2013. Okay. Um, and then... Uh, before we knew it, we had paid for the training, bought the equipment, did a first round of patients, and the results were so phenomenal. We did another round of patients. It was like, ah, it must have been fake. Like, we read the papers, like, oh, 93 to 95% success rate. And I'm like, mm, whatever. Yeah. And the all the patients just got better so fast, and they were loving it, and it was amazing. We stopped doing everything else that we were doing and just focused entirely on stem cells. Wow, that I didn't expect that kind of answer. I thought you'd say you were interested in it, found this company or this clinic. So it came from the ground up. That's mm-hmm. really intriguing. Uh, and y'all, same, I mean, presumably same kind of handful of people, it sounds like, that are still passionate about it or kind of still working on it? Or So the partnership dissolved with that other clinic, and that's how Stem Cellix came to be. Okay, okay. Well, look, we talk about that's the nature of business. We wanted to make sure we kind of get some general information about stem cell. I want to hear about your plight, but also there's a business to this and you've got a big stigma issue. I'm sure to deal with Mm -hmm. like Dumbo's like us didn't know that you could do so much stuff. Uh, I knew it. I didn't, I didn't know anything about it. Learned it this morning, but (laughs) 
Well, still I, counts. <laughs> what's going on with that? I mean, like, what are you fighting against? I feel like you're going to fight against a PR kind of thing uh, for a while, just because we just don't. There's too much. Look, there's too much shit we, we're paying attention to that's garbage. Like, I've never cared about celebrity news, but I seem to get it all the time. People tell me about it. I don't give a shit. I've never asked for it. I've never cared about a Kardashian once. And somehow I, I know way I really do. It's fine. <laughs> you try not to. Look, but you're on really it. You're being do. honest, though. There's some people. As long as you're honest. Like, yeah. which, what's the new baby's name? Like, I gotta know. Look, I can I can waste time in in other areas that is just as like flip it. You know, like I don't. It, it adds no value to your life. It, from that is what it looks like to me. I'm saying, my my thing is like, um, you're going to be kind of going into you're going into a, a fragmented uh, attention span era. Which uh, you know, an opinion over fact era, um, and is that a fact? <laughs> does it matter? <laughs> if I nope. say it emphatically, yeah. it doesn't matter, right? <laughs> right, right. It is a fact. Now it's a fact. <laughs> well, we talk. I've declared it so. Yeah. I think that's interesting. In the uh, we talk in uh, shorthand a lot of the time on this show in absolutes, and obviously some things are opinions. But when we're trying to say, when we're trying to give advice for pragmatic advice for business stuff, it's kind of like this is the way. But we know there is, it's not black and white. Mm-hmm. It's, there's gray area in everything. And uh, I think it's interesting that we live in this weird, I'm going to cherry pick what science I appreciate and not in, in that kind of I don't need science. My favorite Opinion. word in the whole world is research. So everybody I talk to about stem cell has done so much research. And it's funny to me that um, we don't actually know what that word means anymore. We think that we read three articles, five paragraphs each. I did research. I'm now an expert. And it's so weird because we just have access to all this information, which is not verified on yeah. <laughs> Google. Um, and I have to be like, okay, well, I actually have done research. You know, there's a scientific process that you have to do. You have to prove a hypothesis. Or and you, you, and you, you scientists are dicks about it. <laughs> Because you guys want to put your flag on everything. No, because did you do that research or did you read some words that might have been someone else's opinion? I know, but you got another <laughs> fight within this fight of the research part. We we had our buddy Chris Reddy on, and he he it was explained to us that everybody wants to put their stank on it. Like he's a scientist too. He's a re- cancer research scientist. That's why I- and he was saying that yeah, <laughs> he he's also a comedian. I could have just said comedian. And been why like, what? Who, what, who cares what he says? He no, he's Indian. He, no, that's cool. He's Indian. He's fine. Uh, uh, but I'm saying like he was he was basically explaining like they have more ego than comics about like material, which is crazy to me. Like. Uh, I thought of that. That was my original thought. How well, dare you? Well, was, uh, Intellectual property. Hack premise. <laughs> Sa- similar thinking. Parallel thoughts. Um, but my thing was like, I didn't realize that I get it. You have to have some ego to do this kind of research, right? To go to to basically thwart whatever's going on in the status quo and go. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think I I I think that's wrong. I need to do a study on it, or mm-hmm. I have a theory. I have a mm-hmm. hypothesis. hypothesis. Or I'm going to save the world. Yeah. That's what you all really think, isn't it? And then it's. The I most, wake up every day. And then it's the most boring the thing. Have you ever looked okay. at one of those? The abstract is like, oh my god. Listen to me. me. So patients come in and uh, they're like, "Well, where's the research?" I'm like, "Well, if you go to our website, there's this whole article called what? research article. There's a tab called research articles, and you could read till your heart's content. But 90 percent of people will read three sentences in this and go, "Wow, I did research. That was hard. And they're not going to read the whole thing because it's awful. It's the most boring thing in the whole world to read unless you're me, and I like it. <laughs> so. Yeah, decision has been made. Three sentences. <laughs> that is the cutoff. <laughs> so is there anything these things can't do? Stem cells? Yeah. So there's plenty of things they can't do. I like to tell people about the limitations because they get this whole magic pill um, kind of uh, stigma attached to it. So if you have a torn ligament or a torn tendon and it is completely torn, like not hanging on by a thread, stem cells can't fix that. It has no attachment point, right? So what's it going to do? So it's on opposite sides of your knee and now it's just going to grow back together. That doesn't make logical sense. Right, so it, sure. I mean, surgeon could tape it together, and then then you do your injection thingy. Yeah, is that well, what do they do that? So there are <laughs> stem cells for post surgery, and we refer to orthopedic surgeons all the time because if you have a congenital deformity, let's say you have a patellar tilt, your knee is tilted. It's uh-huh. it's wrong. Okay, uh-huh. stem cells aren't going to fix your tilt. They're just going to make your wrongness stronger. Right, so they're going to. Uh, you know, avert uh, back uh, to the original anatomy. Okay, yeah. that makes sense. So it's their swag, 
So, oh, so I like that you're leaning that way. This is another Le- one. Legacy swag. People yeah. have like bulging discs and herniated discs, but their spine looks like an S. And we go, no amount of stem cells injected into that vertebrae are going to help you until you straighten out your spine. And guess what? Stem cells can't straighten out your spine. You need a rod and cage and pins and screws to do that. So there's definitely limitations. So stem cells mainly for muscle, cartilage, what, not bone. I don't know. You're shaking your head like, no, no, no. You didn't get any of this. So you can't, if you're deformed. No, I get. I got that. Like the bow-leggedness. Yeah. They're not, if we inject stem cells into your bow legs they're not going to go back to normal legs like so you're still structure bullet. yeah yeah they yeah, don't yeah. make new structure yeah you know they if i was a pitcher that it's good for that right if i threw out my arm because i i was a submarine thrower or something, yeah, what does that mean threw out your arm like super medical tommy term. tommy john surgery kind of stuff where if it's torn that's what she's saying if it's completely torn completely ripped yeah not so completely ripped though. i like to i like to like normally i rip a piece of paper we don't believe in paper in this office no that's good paper we'll do that paper. one no no that don't that <laughs> she changed the page so she's on my good notes no, we're kidding that's our bluetooth paper by the way oh no yeah, you told me about this I, yeah. i'm ripping it sorry to everyone so here's your let's say this is your meniscus okay super great right uh-huh. intact we tear it uh-oh okay. That's bad. It's flopping around. Oh, no. What are we going to do? We can use stem cells. We can fix this right up. Okay. As soon as it's a full thickness tear. Yeah. Whoop, full thickness tear. Uh-huh. Can't do anything about it. You got to go to surgery. I, I actually get this a lot better now. Okay. Did, <laughs> I was going to say, did you not get it before and now you get it? I'm worried you about the, to see it. I, I'm worried about the next question. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. I'm busy hosting. Uh, yeah. Some Someone's got to move this thing along, you know? <laughs> Someone's got to drive this. Uh, yeah, and what you were talking about with the research thing, we've talked about imposter syndrome on this podcast a lot with a friend of the program, Alex Abel. And then the other side of that is the Dunning-Kruger effect, which is you watch YouTube videos, you think you know everything about what you just watched and like the subject matter. Mm-hmm. And I think you deal with a lot of that, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's interesting how we're in that era. Uh, I think I feel like imposter syndrome a lot of the time sometimes – if you're like, no, this is the way kind of stuff. Uh, but maybe that it, it might not be me as much as it is. It, our stuff's not deterministic where people think it is. And I mm-hmm. think you deal with that too. Yeah. Life isn't deterministic, right? This is what I've been kind of thinking about a lot. Everybody thinks you can plan and plan and plan. You can do all these things and it should be X. Mm-hmm. And that's not how it is. Never is. It can be probable. It can have a high confidence rate. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Coefficients, coefficient of variances. Yeah, you can have a high R. Stats, I went to college. Yeah. It could have a high R square. Reading a course listing. My confidence okay. rate is pretty good, guys. Um, so uh, I would say, well, so as a business, because we've got we got enough time to talk business yeah. stuff. How is what's the challenge with this business? As far as uh, you're obviously passionate about it, you obviously know your stuff. Um, that's huge. I think you have to in a thing where you're kind of swimming uphill consider it being a disruptor business Mm -hmm. because you kind of are in a way i'm sure there's pressure from not like there's mafia like health you know like i'll keep my political views out of this well you think there's stuff at a bigger level you can say whatever you want i don't care uh we this is an open this is an actual safe space you can say whatever you want um but it's the space out there that's not safe after you say it. <laughs> Depends. I'm well, not right now to... when you say it, it's fine. Yeah. No, I so mean, once we put it out, you know. yeah. it's a legislative nightmare to try to um, control something that's in your body. Right. So currently there's like this whole thing about FDA. Oh, well, stem cells aren't FDA approved. Well, I'll have you know that the FDA stands for the Food and Drug Administration. So right. you're telling me that your stem cells are a drug? Eh, most people will disagree that they're a drug. However, once we take them out of the body and they're, you know, it's governed by the practi- the boards of medicine, the practice of medicine, now it's this, oh, it's weird because before everything we injected was a medicine or a drug and it should be controlled as such. But now it's like, well, it's not a drug. Well, what is it? You know, there's yeah. no box for that yeah. You know, and when they're trying to make laws and like deal with this problem. You know, and then insurance billing is just, there's a code for that. I know the code for that. Like specificity codes, like down to like knee pain. They have like eight different knee pains, right? Is yeah. it localized knee pain, acute knee pain, chronic knee pain? Like, and they don't, they don't have a code for it. What do you, do you think when, do you think it's a public or big private issue that like when one, so who, who do you think is going to kind of get to this first? Cause I feel like 
a private health insurance would it's weird I don't, health insurance is funky in the way that they have to rely on the public part of it it's weird because the, if you're getting better it's a pool of money it's not like you know they're not gonna have that long game of you know people keep getting sick you need to keep i think the same thing too but thing. you sound like conspiracy theorists when you say it out loud to people and they're like well, well come it's on not that's a conspiracy. not their thing it's, it's like well no it's that's how their business is set up i just let's think let's call people, lifetime value of a client right yeah. that's yeah. what we look forget at that health care is a business they go oh i went to the hospital they took care of me thank god i'm not dead and yeah. we go, yay! But then you get a forty thousand dollar bill for being in the ER, and they go, mm, guess that's the way it is. No, it doesn't. It guess doesn't I'll avoid the hospital next time. <laughs> yeah. right? That's all that does. So it's it's bizarre that people don't actually see healthcare establishments as a business unless they have to pay cash, right? If you have to pay cash for it, now you're a business, and they and they get a little you know, customer service oriented, like what kind of guarantee do I get for this? You well, know, like a lot of, of uh, people. So the audience for this show is mainly the idea of the show is for the people that, you know, are doing their side thing or want to do that, that thing they really want to do mm -hmm. while they're stuck in the nine to five or mm -hmm. they're already there. They just need some kind of oomph around them. <laughs> I feel like a lot of entrepreneurs uh, have the catastrophic catastrophic health insurance if any mm -hmm. health insurance mm -hmm. at all yeah. mm -hmm. so that's one of those things where i've talked to a lot of startups lately that mm -hmm. we've been uh doing discovery meetings with and whatnot i'm like mm -hmm. so let's go over some basic personal stuff for y'all do you have health insurance because you mm -hmm. may need that just in case because if you're knocked out your whole business is out mm -hmm. and they're like oh shit yeah i didn't think about it yeah yeah it's uh, another 800 bucks a month to get the actual health insurance or whatever it is yeah it's gonna be you know twofold or whatever well, I on mean, top of what you're paying. I think part of part of the way I would view uh, from a business standpoint or from a value added standpoint, if for stem cell, if I had something that y'all could fix through stem cells, I would just look at that as, you know, this will improve my life, thus improve work, thus make more money to capitalize that's, on that. That's hard, but you're also in that entrepreneurial space, right? So most most of the public in the United States go... Insurance pays for my health care. Cool. Like, and when you ask them to pay out of pocket for health care, they go, what, why, who? And they have all these questions now that they didn't have before. But now that their insurance doesn't cover it, they're like, well, you know, and it's just it's a paradigm shift that is just so hard to wrap your mind around. So our older patients, we get um, quite a bit of, you know, seniors, you know, degenerative issues, osteoarthritis, those sorts of things. And they go, well, you know, I served in Vietnam. Like, why do I have to pay for health care? And I'm like, I don't think that you should have to pay for health care. Right. Unfortunately, you currently have to pay for this health care. not the right. time to bring up NOM, sir. <laughs> yeah. Just the bill. Charlie is not behind <laughs> our stethoscopes. Uh, just, just, just relax, bro. So if it, are people being referred to you by doctors? Is that how it's going? Or is it kind of just like, hey, look at this. Maybe this might work for you sort of thing. I'm just curious how somebody gets to you in, you know, besides uh, an ad or whatever, you know, happenstance. So there's a couple of parts of that question. I'll answer the doctor one first. I would mm. love wow, to. professional. So professional. <laughs> really I would love to establish Polished. some relationships with physicians. So um, we didn't talk about it, but we treat COPD, which is chronic obstructive pulmonary disorder, which basically means you can't breathe. Um, and all of those people with COPD should have a pulmonologist, which is a lung doctor. So I have a COPD patient who got such incredible results with stem cell that he is now playing like 18 holes of golf and it's really cool. Well, his Humble doctor, yeah. yeah, his doctor, his pulmonologist told him not to do stem cell and it was cod's wallop and there wasn't enough research and those sorts of things. And we have a mutual patient now and I just want to meet this guy and say, I'm not trying to take your patients, dude. I want to help all of your lung patients who can't breathe breathe better you know but i haven't really established a lot of those referral relationships with those we send people to orthopedics but they don't usually send back to us so the second part of that question is, is how do i get my patients and um after august of last year uh we decided not to throw any more money at advertising um uh, sorry right well we found that we got a lot of leads and we, we made a decent return, but it was almost not worth our time to weed through the unqualified candidates and the no call, you know, no call, no shows. So oh, now well, we got you for that. Don't worry. We simply we do you. relationship marketing sure. and grassroots stuff. I do a lot of speaking engagements and I literally just go get them, bring them in. You still might be <laughs> like kind of, you don't have a template. That's what we struggle with too. We mm -hmm. had to kind of figure out who were best 
uh, kind of, and it's more personality than it is industry, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. For us, for you, it's really hard to maybe find out who's going to be open minded, you know, based on just like you were talking about with the healthcare for the code for knee pain. Mm-hmm. You know, it's the same thing for a target a target audience. You're going to have a uh, you have a psychology behind your audience that you have to figure out too. It's, to make it a qualified lead. But it's also super weird when you start talking about qualified leads because I've worked with tons of um, digital advertising agencies. They're like, who's your perfect lead? I'm like, well, which niche are we talking about, right? Like, are we doing orthopedic? Are we doing pulmonary, yeah, autoimmune, anti That gives anti-aging? me so much like, uh, confidence in what we're doing because we don't do it that way. Mm-hmm. Uh, we just go, let's, t- let's talk about like what's a good, you know, what's your, we, we kind of break it up home runs, triples, singles, doubles. Mm-hmm. Like, who's your, Who's your ultimate one like that? But mm-hmm. we know it's not the same thing. And it right. might be defined by how you can get to them yeah. or what message you can send to them. Right. So sometimes you, they're interchangeable. Mm-hmm. Real quick before we have to go, what's the worst case scenario if somebody gets stem cells? Like A doctor says, don't do it. There's not enough research. Is he thinking that you're going to grow an ear out of your knee? I, or what is he thinking? I have heard the ear out of your knee thing probably a dozen times. That, who started that rumor? So The what? <laughs> the, Was it that those two body parts? No, someone said it. So um, embryonic stem cells can turn into any type of stem cells. We don't use those. Those They're are the baby the ones? Those are the baby ones. Oh. Um, Good. So... Um, there were su- there were some things reported, not sure if true or untrue. So stem cells, your stem cells cannot hurt you, okay? There's been no adverse reactions associated with stem cells themselves. However, anytime you undergo a medical procedure, there's risks of a medical procedure, right? So anytime you cut the skin, whether it be to get your blood drawn or as big as, you know, an actual surgery, there's a risk of infection. Sure. Um, and then there's, you know, risk of like bruising, itchiness, swelling, you know, um, adverse reactions to t- uh, local anesthetic. Those are the risks that are associated with it. But it's not Nothing stem abnormal. cells can't hurt you. Yeah. Okay. The guy from NOM's not scared Good to know. Of that. Yeah. Yeah. Good to know. Yeah. The guy that went to NOM's like, just rub some dirt on it. And yeah. Just, yeah. yeah. Worst, it worst thing, like, Sir, it doesn't help you as much as you wanted it to. Mm. Uh, you know, but with a ninety-three to ninety-five percent success rate, I what the fu- think I'll take my chances. That's a <laughs> that's a big number. That so you have to be f- number. You have to be frustrated, like I get with what we're doing in the same direction. Where you go, God, I, this isn't everything by mm-hmm. any means, mm-hmm. but it's so successful. And it, it, is that frustrating for you that you can't get the word out more and more? Like. You can do a podcast in here, by the yeah. way. What? Uh, what's bananas to me is that people will be like, oh, I don't know. I think surgery might be safer. What? Yeah. You know, you really signed that you could die. Like you right, signed right. that waiver. Like, try and you're the like, easy one first. Safer. So recently on my Facebook page, my Melissa Golden, just my personal Facebook page, I post stuff and I posted a picture of a surgery. So it had, you know, the uh, knee opened up. And, um, I was about to like it, and then I don't know now. <laughs> so it was just, yeah, it was like the knee opened up, and I was like, you could do this, or you could do this. And it got flagged for being inappropriate graphic content. Really? Like, sorry, oh. Facebook. Um, I thought it was okay for people to know what they were signing up for when they were having knee surgery. Yeah, you can go through us next time if you want to do that. <laughs> so even with organic stuff, because we have agency credit, there's like a, you know how Uber has a, uh, like, Uber drivers have a, your, you have one as a passenger. You have a, a star rating. Yeah. Mine's amazing. We kind of have that for uh, for online How ads. do you find your Uber star you, rating? You got to ask it's on them. your Uber app. Oh, it's it in is? there now. I looked, oh, I saw it the other day. It? Yeah. Yeah. You used to have to ask them back in the day. Yeah, they were lying to you. you what know? about my sweat equity? We, that we, that's at, all the time we I don't have. want you to be late. Yeah, you got to hard out. Look at that, 229. Boom. Thanks for coming on. Sweatequitypod.com. Stem Celix. Check it out. With IX, Stem Cell IX. Dot org.